Let me ask you a question about the rapture. Is it true or false? Coming up next. And once again, the question here today is whether or not the rapture is true or false. Now, this teaching of the rapture and taking away of the church has been taught for quite a number of years in many evangelical churches and has been, well, has become a significant part of the end time doctrine and theology. However, there are some who argue that this teaching is false and the misinterpretation of Bible passages that speaks of the second coming of Christ. I want us to take a look at Revelation 3, verse 10. It reads like this. It says, Because you have kept my command and persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth or upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Now, this passage in Revelation seems to suggest that believers in Christ will not go through what is known as the tribulation and therefore will be removed or taken away prior to this event. So the teaching is that the church will be removed while the rest of the world experience seven years of tribulation like the world has never seen before. So, but more on the topic of the tribulation in another video. Uh, today, I want to deal with the rapture, and certainly I will deal with the tribulation at another time. Also, we're going to read Daniel 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. Now, this passage also seems to suggest something similar, that there would be a, um, a removal or certain people will not go through this time of turmoil. And this is what we really have to look into to figure out whether or not it is speaking of a rapture where the church uh, is taken away while everybody else stays, or is it a misinterpretation? Let's continue. We're going to also read Matthew 24, verse 30 through 31. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and that they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and a great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to another. Now, this passage seems to suggest something totally different. This passage in Matthew is saying clearly that the second coming of Christ will not be a secret, but that all eyes shall see him, meaning the entire world will know of it because of its magnitude and the greatness of and all the earth will mourn because they will look on him, basically whom they have pierced or whom they, they had put to death, not believing that Jesus Christ will come again. And many you speak to today uh, say, well, I've been hearing this from ever since I was a little boy. I've been hearing this my whole entire life. And he has not come and he will not come. As a matter of fact, you even have churches that are teaching that Jesus will not come again. Why? I believe because they have lost their faith. Now let's take a look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 and see what it has to say. It says, For the Lord himself 
will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. This is a pretty clear passage, and this passage is very, very well known. Now, this is the one of the passages uh, that is most cited for the rapture. As I was taught in church growing up, this was the passage that was used most to explain the rapture, and also this one, Matthew 24, 38 through 45. And it says, For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, unto the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came, and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Again, this referenced uh, the time of Noah when the people were taken by surprise, even though Noah preached for so many years, they did not take heed. And I believe it's saying that the very same thing is going to happen in the future, when Christ returns, it's going to take the world by surprise. Why? Because men, they have hardened their heart. They have refused to believe. They have refused to accept the truth of the gospel. And even though the coming is taking so long, his return is taking so long, and he's tarrying, believe me, the days are shortened. And he is definitely coming real soon. So the bottom line is that Jesus is coming back when we least expect it. And we need to be ready. The times are getting really serious. And it is closer than we think. And the earth, the earth and this world will end. The answer of Christ is soon to be revealed along with the rebuilding of the third Jewish temple, which is already in the planning stages, awaiting a political shift, I believe, in the world, so that as to allow them to rebuild, especially given the Islamic opposition that they face. But it's definitely going to happen. I'm sure you've seen the movie series entitled Left Behind, where some believers were taken away while those that did not believe were left to go through the time of tribulation for a period of seven years. With, with other so-called believers that were not serious about their faith and had to pay the price. As the man of sin ruled the world, he, was, he is referred to as the Antichrist, the man who will rule the entire world or sometimes referred to as the beast. Now, the understanding by some is that the rapture will take place just before the seven years of tribulation, which is called pre-tribulation. While we find that there are others who believe that it will happen in the middle of the tribulation, which would be uh, three and a half years, which is called mid tribulation. And there are also those who believe that the church 
will go through the entire tribulation period and that Jesus will return after this time. This is referred to as post tribulations. Where it really doesn't matter what you believe. Because one of the things that we have to consider is that when the scripture was translated, not all of it could have been translated uh, word for word. And this is where we have some of our issues and some of our problems. We got to go back and look at the original uh, Hebrew, um, probably even look at the Greek and the Aramaic to see exactly if there are any better ways of translating these very same passages even today. So it's, it's, it's important that we understand that we do not have a word for word translation. They did their best and uh, translated as close as they possibly could. However, even some, even then some of these uh, passages are very, very difficult to understand, especially those that deal with the end times. Okay. So it, it's quite difficult to say whether or not the rapture is true or false. But I tell you something, we have got to build a solid foundation on the knowledge that Christ died for our sins and that he is definitely coming again for a people and a church that is ready. Just like in the days of Noah, when Noah and his family was basically ready because God spoke to Noah and told him exactly what to do. And they got themselves ready and waited for the flood because Noah was convinced that it would take place. We too have to do the exact same thing as the passage of scripture referenced uh, Noah and what happened in that day. We need to live as if today is our last day on earth. And in so doing, we will be ready when he comes. So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, just know that he is coming back just like he said he would. If you're not ready to meet him, then I suggest that you get ready. It's time for all of us to accept the grace of God that has been poured out so that we might be saved from the wrath to come. Look around you. The persecution of Christians is on the rise because the truth has become a lie in the eyes of men. They despise the truth. They certainly despise everything that the Bible stands for. They also despise what Christians stand for. And so the wrath of God will be poured out. And if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please accept him today because there is life after death. And the judgment also awaiting all of us, some to life everlasting and others to eternal punishment, which is called hell. Well, thanks for watching this video. Remember, there is freedom in truth. And if you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Once you click the subscribe button right down here, also click the bell icon so that you will not miss out on any notifications of new videos that are posted. I am William Nelson Ryan, and I am saying to you, Shalom. May the peace of God be with you. Until next time.